Welcome to the Pog Show. I'm your host, Christine Martindale, Public Information Officer for the City of Port Orange, a city in Central Florida that is unique by choice, not by chance. I will be bringing you powerful interviews and on-the-go info to gain a better understanding of the various services and functions our city provides. So let's get started. Hello, everyone, to episode 009 of the Pog Show. Today I have with me in the podcast studio John McClellan, quartermaster of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, post-3282. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Thanks for having me. Oh, glad to have you. So before we talk a little bit about the VFW, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. So I'm a retired military officer. from. I was in the Army for 28 years. And my wife and I, uh, Sheila and I, moved here uh, in 2014. And uh, we live in countryside. Um, and then uh, I joined the post, and then I started working at the post part-time. Port Orange, um, 2014. That's, that's right around the time that I moved to Port Orange. And uh, what did you, where did you come before, before then? Well, my last assignment was in Hawaii. I was the uh, staff engineer, the director of engineering for U.S. Army Pacific. So I worked at the headquarters of, of all of the Army for the Pacific. Um, nice. Yeah, that was nice. With a year in Iraq thrown in there. Yeah. I've been to Hawaii twice, and uh, I'm dying to go back for sure. What part of Hawaii? Uh, so the, the post where I was working is in Honolulu, on Oahu. So for a short period of time, we lived in Waikiki in a leased apartment. So I, I went from the world's second most famous beach to the world's most famous beach <laughs> here in Daytona. And I was going to say, and even New Smyrna, isn't it the shark capital of the world, right? So, Volusia is, yeah, it's pretty active. Gosh, I haven't seen any, any yet. Let's just keep it that way, right? Um, but anyway, I just wanted to give our listeners a little bit of background uh, about the VFW. The Veterans of Foreign Wars is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving the needs of our veterans and their families. VFW Post 3282 symbolizes volunteerism, and community service, and every dollar is spent on supporting veterans to continue their mission of helping the community. And they are a close uh, community partner with our city, which is, that's why I'm so happy to have you on here, John. Um, So with VFW Post 3282, with being a a community partner with the city, tell us about some of the programs or give us uh, just some details about your post. Sure. So, I mean, the most direct program that we do with the city of Port Orange are the annual celebrations of or remembrances, if you will, of Memorial Day and Veterans Day. So our post um, organizes those ceremonies on behalf of the city and they're held right here in the in the city center at the Veterans Plaza. Uh, Sometimes the American Legion participates. There's an American Legion post in Port Orange, Uh, school children, uh, members of our post, and other members of the of the Port Orange community. And I've been the master of ceremonies for five years, I think, now. Oh, I know. And it's I love being part of those um, as a spectator as well as as a public information officer working those events. Um, I know with last year with COVID, uh, we did those Facebook Lives, and we really get to capture. Uh, it's, just a, it's a great celebration, a great ceremony, and it really captures so much. And so I'm you know, glad to be part of it. Um, and then we're doing it again this year and give a little plug about it. At yeah, the end. so, uh, you know, Monday, the 31st of May, I think it is this year, we'll be back on the plaza. Last year we were virtual, um, but people could watch it on the, on the uh, city Facebook page. I think it was on Facebook. Um, but we'll be back live. We were there on Veterans Day this past Veterans Day with a small crowd. Um, this town is very patriotic. I, the first time I went to the ceremony when I wasn't running it, I was surprised how many people there were just in the lawn around. There's usually three or four hundred people come to that ceremony, so um, it's it speaks well of of the city, and you know we, we enjoy o- doing it. Absolutely, we always attract such a great crowd for sure. And Veterans Day in November, and then in Memorial Day in May. Um, other programs, if you want to um, just touch on a little bit too. Yeah, so we, there's a lot of things we do in the community. They mostly center around veterans, as you described in your lead-in. Um, we provide honors at military funerals or military honors at memorial services for veterans, not just in Port Orange, but really across Volusia County. And there are several other VFWs in our district that are in this county or nearby. But, you know, we, we handle our geography 
or anyone that asks that we can cover. Um, we do things as simple as flag disposal. You can come to the post with, a, with an American flag and, and we will properly dispose of it. You bring it over, there's actually a box on the outdoor porch on the side of our building. We don't even have to be there. And typically once a month, we, we take those flags for, for disposal. Um, we provide direct assistance to veterans in need uh, who come to us and say, I, I need some help, and that's financial assistance or other things. We've been known to do things like build handicap entrances, ramps to people's side doors when they found that they, they couldn't go up and down the steps anymore or any number of other kinds of things, roof repairs, other small repairs for our members. Um, and we'll help veterans who are not our members. Uh, we have a screening process for that, and people apply. We have a service officer in the post who's trained in with the, how the VA operates. Uh, we actually work with the local VA and Volusia County Veterans Services, who have trained service officers also. Uh, so veterans who, who need help with claims or disability actions, we tend to refer them to county veterans. Uh, we encourage all veterans in the community to you know, to go to the VA and use their services if they're eligible. Volusia County has 50,000, north of 50,000 veterans living in it, which is about a tenth of the population of the county. That's a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad, um, you know, it, it's just a great VFW. And I think it's the, the, your post, isn't that the second largest, uh, I read, second largest in Florida? <laughs> yes, we are. We, we uh, our membership is just under 1,000 members and then three or 400 more auxiliary. And we are the second largest post in Florida. We're an all-state post, which means we met certain criteria of excellence. And we're also an all-American post this past year. So we were in the top 25 posts in our division um, by size, the category by size, which is 750 members or more. Right. And uh, you also have a great space over there, too, right off of Williamson. And uh, I've been there a few times, but I know it's it's great conference space, too, and um, you can use it for just so many different occasions as yeah, well. Yeah, we do, and we rent the space there to to some organizations, other nonprofits, or just uh, paying customers. It's a 3,000-square-foot room, and it's completely self-contained with its own entrances and bathrooms and all that kind of stuff, and video capability, you know, sound capability. Um, but we also have other veterans groups in the county, specifically on this side of Volusia County, but uh, towards the beach side. But uh, we have seven or eight groups who meet there regularly every month who don't have their own building. So these are groups like the Korean War Veterans Association, the Vietnam Veterans Association, uh, the Marine Corps League, two motorcycle groups, and, and others uh, who, who we provide that room at least once a month at no cost to them. And that's something else that we, we do in the community um, to, to support veterans. Right. And I just thought this was just such a great topic. I know with you know, Memorial Day coming up in the next month, but a lot of our listeners are here in people in Port Orange don't know about you know, your post and, and what you guys do here in the community. And so I thought this would be just a great opportunity for you to come on here. So um, that's, that's wonderful. And that's just one aspect of what you do, <laughs> right? So um, in addition to the VFW, uh, you're kind of related as a community partner in another way too, but tell us a little bit more about what we talked about before we got on it. On yeah, here. so my other nonprofit here in Port Orange is the Walking Club. It's called the Happy Wanderers. And they were here before I got here. They've been in Volusia for, this is our 30th year, actually. It's our 30th anniversary this year. They started in Pearson in 1991 and then very fairly soon moved to Port Orange, uh, which is just to say that that's where the P.O. box is. And we have members in Port Orange, Daytona, New Smyrna Beach, the surrounding area, DeLand, Sanford. Um, and it is a very um, sort of informal but organized you know, walking group. We go out twice a week, typically, uh, in, in groups, uh, typically with a guide, uh, and either walk for an hour or two hours. Uh, on weekends, we do a one-hour and a two-hour walk. Uh, we have several places we go across this county and adjoining counties. Uh, we publish a calendar of those events. We're on social media, and, and uh, we have a web page and so forth. Club has about 120 members, roughly, um, and uh, we, we just try to work on people's fitness. Um, the motto, we're part of a, a national organization that has 
200 clubs in 45 states, and the motto is fun, fitness, and friendship. Uh, it's not competitive in any way. In fact, it's specifically non-competitive. Uh, we also occasionally do some bike rides. Uh, we have a swimming event right here in the YMCA. You can go and swim a designated distance, uh, but mostly walking. That's awesome. And I, and, uh, I know there is a connection to the city because you do have a nice connection with our Get Fit program that our city does as well, too. So tell us a little bit about that connection with yeah, the, so Get Fit. Yeah, so we made that connection, through. I think we've been doing three years now with the Get Fit program, which is a 10-week program that the Parks and Recreation Division run um, every spring. And I, when I found out about it, I, I called over there and, and I said, I'm representing the walking club and we'd love to host an event with you or, or you know, be part of the the uh, community partners and so the last uh, couple of years we've typically hosted the first event of the 10 weeks the day that people first sign in um, and we've just taken people for a one mile walk right here around the city center as a, as a you know uh, precursor because you haven't finished the 10 weeks yet and for some people the idea of walking a mile is a lot um, and then we also run the normal three uh, three mile and six mile walk that my club would do so you know, people have have uh, taken us up on those, and then a few people have come back over time. The the Get Fit program kind of goes through different phases. They have different uh, local gymnasiums and other people who support them for a week at a time here and there. So they kind of move through that. But we've had a few people who came back and and visited us at other sites. Um, you know, when they were done with the Get Fit program. So it's a good program. No, it is. And and I'm glad you were able to collaborate with that because, um, you know, Ter Teresa Rick Wiggins in uh, Parks and Recreation, yeah. give yeah. her a huge shout out. I know she organizes it and it's been just such a great program. In fact, they were um, still going, you know, um, I know with last year with COVID, that was disappointing. But this year, again, going moving forward with that and um, just to give a little plug, you know, in details to our listeners, uh, obviously, this program for 2021 is well underway, but stay tuned for uh, details and dates for uh, 2022 already. So, um, But it is a great program, and I'm glad that you were able to collaborate with the city on that, too, because um, it's such a – walking It's just such a great exercise. You know, um, I'm a runner. And I'm a cyclist and a swimmer, so maybe I'll have to take you up on, uh, yeah. you know, walking's really not my thing, but I'm getting better at, sometimes I feel like, you know, walking is, is not as good as running, but I take that back because I've been doing a little bit more speed walking, and that's a workout. I don't know if you guys do, um, you know, in terms of a, or there's different calibers or there's different pace pace groups that you guys have well we certainly have people who have different capabilities i mean we tend to uh, walk at a very moderate pace three miles an hour roughly um which most people can handle at at, at any age i have i have members of our clubs who are uh, who are in their 80s who are active who were at the walk wednesday night that we did in venetia bay um it's mostly 50 and over but we're happy to have younger people come and and you know it's um there's a fitness component, especially when we walk on the beach. Quite frequently, we walk, we, we go to the beach parks. Um, they have parking and, and bathrooms. And just head out on the beach a half an hour in one direction and then turn around and come back. And so we can spread out a little more on the beach and we, we can see where everybody is. When we walk inside the communities and some of the other parks in the city, and a lot of times we're starting at a, at a Port Orange City Park. I think I've been to all of them many times. Um, we tend to stay together a little more closely and, and keep an eye on where everyone, you know, because you head down a cul-de-sac, turn somewhere, all of a sudden no one can find you. So, uh, and we'll wait. Um, and we do have, we do have uh, some walkers who either have injuries or um, are, have just slowed down a little bit who will form a smaller group and may not complete the whole hour on a Wednesday night. They may just do, uh, you know, uh, 20 or 30 minutes. Sure. And they know the area. And there are people in the club who know all of our, where we go. I mean, from the starting points that we go from the various parks, uh, we have three or four options typically, but they know where they are and they can take newcomers and get them back to their car. Right. So we've and never lost anybody I've, in the six years I've been here. I was going to ask you, what are the age ranges? All, all, all different types. Yeah. Ranges. And it's most, mostly, mostly older, mostly 50 and, and up. Um, hey, 50 isn't, 50 some, isn't old. Some people between 35 and, and 50, um, very cool. 
Um, is there anything else? I know we touched on a lot of what you do. Is there, um, tell our listeners anything else that you'd like to touch on um, in terms of anything about the walking club or the VFW? Um, anything you'd like to share that I didn't cover? We, um, I mean, for the, for the walking club, just come down sometime and check us out. We, as I say, we're on Facebook. We're on meetup.com, which is a great platform if, if people haven't used it where you match your hobbies or the things you're looking to do with the groups that provide them in the local area. Uh, and so you can find us and just come on out and, and try out the club. We go to a lot of neat places. We were just at Ponce Preserve uh, last Wednesday, uh, week before, and I've taken people on that walk, and then they say, well, I've been living here for 20-something years, and I never knew this was here. Uh, so it's just uh, you, you kind of discover your own neighborhood, your own community when you see it on foot. W Americans were so much about our cars that we often, you know, you don't see things in the car. No, I agree. Uh, There's certain th neighborhoods I take when I'm walking, running, or driving. And I'm like, I didn't see that. It's like when you're driving, you're just so focused. But when you're walking, you're running, you just see it from a whole new different perspective for sure and I know they can reach you through the VFW probably the website's probably the best www.fwpost3282.org oh, that sounds right yeah Yeah. okay yeah. And, um, and we also have a, the Facebook page uh, for the VF for the VFW and you should be able to find it with just type in post 3282 or port orange VFW or any keywords like that and it'll it'll come up right um, the VFW is also a member of the Chamber of Commerce uh, we try to work with local businesses. We've been known to host uh, business after hours occasionally. I think we did it in 2018 the last time. Um, we also have several educational programs in the VFW. We can work with scouts. Uh, we can work with school children. One of the things we do is the etiquette of our flag. I actually brought the little book for you today. I'll oh, hand you. that to you. Before the pandemic, we went to the commander, Chris Gates, and I and his wife, uh, Debbie, we, the three of us, went to Port Orange Elementary and talked to a whole, the, essentially the, 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 the children at the school who were responsible for the, for the flag every morning and, and evening at the school uh -huh. uh, and just talked to them about the do's and don'ts of, of the American flag. And uh -huh. we can do that with any group, uh, uh, civic or, you know, educational. That's great. Uh, and what I'll do is um, when we tag uh, this episode on our social media page, I can uh, do, a, um, do the do's and don'ts and put a little uh, graphic of that flag brochure that you gave me. So I think that would be very educational for our sure. listeners mm -hmm. and for our audience. So, um, But before we wrap up, I just wanted to remind everyone about the May 31st Memorial Day ceremony this year. Uh, Monday again, Monday, May 31st, the City of Port Orange um, it will be in together with the VFW Post 3282. Uh, will be the uh, Memorial Day ceremony at the City Center Veterans Park, which is a thousand City Center Circle, Port Orange. And they, again, the VFW Post 3282 will host the ceremony, which will feature a display of colors, speeches, and a 21-gun salute. Um, John? 10 a.m. 10 a.m., yes, 10 a.m. There will be a Facebook Live, but it, it is great to come on down, uh, see it in person, be there live. Uh, the the uh, ambiance, the weather is always perfect, and uh, it's just a great time just and to celebrate. Normally no more than an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, Yep, depending on the speakers. Absolutely. <laughs> John, I really appreciate your time to provide us a little bit more insight about the VFW Post 3282 and the Happy Wanderers Club. Yeah, thank you very much. And, of course, the best ways to find the city is by the city's website, www.port-orange.org, the city's Facebook page, Port Orange City Hall, our Twitter page, at City Port Orange, and our LinkedIn page, City of Port Orange. This podcast, The Pog Show, can be found on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. This wraps up episode 009 of The Pog Show. Until next time. Thank you so much for spending time with me today on The Pog Show. We've only just begun. And with you sharing, subscribing, and leaving a five-star review for this podcast, it's really going to help launch us to the next level together. <laughs>